because we need some flexibility. You can always tell when it's a Chabad function, can't you? Uh, I have a question that I was asking myself. How do you introduce someone as well known as Tony Abbott, immediate past Prime Minister? Uh, he's even had, as you might have noticed, a little publicity in the last few days. Uh, because rather than pining behind the scenes, and I'm referring to Christopher Pining, of course, uh, uh, he's been out there openly commenting on important issues. So the way I've decided to approach it is to reveal tonight something in his background that's a bit obscure, a connection, um, perhaps so obscure that even Tony Abbott doesn't know about it. Um, previously, as many of you know, I've had uh, senior leadership positions in the health industry. I've been 2IC of the Australian Medical Association, represented private hospitals. I work particularly closely with uh, former Minister for Health, uh, Michael Woodridge, uh, in the Howard government. Uh, after Michael left politics, he was replaced in the role by Senator Kate Patterson, who not to be too PC, it was a complete dud. <laughs> now, various people in the health industry made that uh, known to the government that a bad choice had been made. Now, I had the opportunity to have dinner with Arthur Sinodinus when he was Chief of Staff of Prime Minister Howard, and we discussed this in detail. He ended up saying to me at the end of the conversation, watch this space. The next week, Tony Abbott was appointed as Minister for Health. So maybe I played a minor role in your career path. <laughs> I learned subsequently from, from Tony when we met when he was Minister for Health that Michael Woolrich had recommended me as someone uh, that he had relied upon to provide advice and guidance outside the bureaucracy. Now, the reason for telling you all of this is that I had an opportunity to see then Minister Abbott uh, as a reversal of the complete day. We saw someone who was intelligent, capable, highly principled, and able to get his head around technical detail. And of course, we've subsequently seen these characteristics applied in his broader roles. He is demonstrably someone who loves and is committed to our country. From the specific perspective of the Jewish community, uh, he's made his mark in addressing things like national security issues, in calling out threats, not bound to PC, by using words like radical Islam and jihadis, in supporting moral and ethical principles, and has even this year been twice, I think, to Israel, so please welcome someone who I regard as a bit of a personal friend, a friend of the Jewish community, a friend of Israel, and a champion of Australian conservative values, the Honourable Tony Abbott. gracious introduction and uh, thank you so much uh, for reminding me of uh, a time when I was going up in the political world <laughs> rather than the opposite. But uh, look, it is uh, wonderful to be here. Uh, I was thrilled when David called me to see whether I would like to be a part of tonight and I am honoured to be a part of tonight because every opportunity to acknowledge the contribution of Jewish people to Australia uh, every opportunity to acknowledge the role of Israel as a bulwark of freedom in an impossibly difficult part of the world is one that I believe I should take and is one that I believe I should cherish. I'm very pleased uh, that Maggie is with me here tonight because it uh, wasn't long ago when uh, we were both able to uh, go to Israel uh, and it was uh, my great honour uh, to receive an honorary doctorate from Tel Aviv 
university. Uh, I thought to myself, prophets may not have much honour in their own country, uh, but at least uh, in the Holy Land there is a certain acknowledgement to be had. And I know that Margie particularly enjoyed the opportunity to visit Israel for the first time and to see some of the wonderful, wonderful sites. Uh, not just the old city of Jerusalem, uh, not just Bethlehem and Nazareth, but Masada as well, the Dead Sea, uh, because this is a very important part of our cultural inheritance. This is not a Jewish inheritance, this is a Western inheritance, because uh, Western civilization is absolutely inconceivable and unimaginable without the Judeo-Christian tradition. So look, it is a real thrill to be here. I'm particularly conscious of the fact that this is the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Beersheba, uh, where the Australian Light Force uh, helped to change the course of the Great War uh, and helped to make the Balfour Declaration a reality, uh, which as we all know, uh, uh, in the fullness of time, uh, helped to lead to uh, the establishment of a Jewish homeland uh, in Israel. It's also the 50th anniversary of the Six Day War, that simply miraculous time uh, when Israel survived a full onslaught from all its local enemies. So I think this is a, a fitting year, again, uh, to acknowledge uh, the contribution that Australia has made to Israel, as well as the contribution that uh, is Jewish people have made uh, to our country, Australia. You know, uh, it's a commonplace that Jewish people have been the lions of business and philanthropy in this country. Uh, business and ph philanthropy in this country uh, is uh, uh, inextricably associated uh, with the Lowys, uh, the, the Pratts, the Gandels, and others. But it would be a big mistake to simply associate the Jewish community in Australia with business. Uh, Jewish people have been champions in every area of Australian life. It's uh, wonderful that Jewish people have made such a contribution, but it's also wonderful that the broader Australian community uh, has made Jewish people so welcome uh, almost for the whole time of our existence. Uh, outside of Israel, Australia is the only country on earth uh, where Jewish people have held the three most important offices. Uh, head of the army, Sir John Monash. Um, head of state, uh, which I believe is what our Governor General is, uh, in Sir Isaac Isaacs and Sir Zelman Cowan, uh, and head of the judiciary. Uh, in Sir Isaac Isaacs. So this is a wonderful acknowledgement of Jewish people and I think it is also something wonderful about Australia that this is the case. <laughs> but as I have discovered on all of my four visits to Israel over the years, as Margie discovered uh, just a few weeks back, when an Australian goes to Israel, you do not feel that you are in a foreign country. Uh, so much about Israel is familiar to Australians, including the arguments that you have amongst yourselves. <laughs> it's impossible to sit down uh, with uh, uh, even one Israeli, uh, and then that Israeli is arguing with himself or herself. With him <laughs> uh, the people are familiar. The issues are largely familiar, uh, and of course the discussions tend to follow a very similar course. In fact, uh, Israel is not so much a, a foreign country. Uh, it is a country where Australians feel very much at home, almost among family. And yet Israel, almost uniquely, is a country which even today is under existential threat. Yes, um, Israel is comparatively stronger today uh, than at almost any time in its history. And yet, despite the 
uh, treaties between Israel and Egypt, uh, despite the relative warmth of the relationship between Israel and Jordan, despite the range of informal contacts which are now taking place between Israel and the Saudis, uh, Israel and the Gulf states, the fact is that large swathes of the Middle East are formally and certainly informally refused to acknowledge the right of Israel to exist and there are hundreds of millions of people in that part of the world that would cheerfully see every last Israeli uh, driven into the sea. So it's absolutely critical that Australia, as a matter of national policy, continue to give the strongest possible support uh, to the State of Israel and continue to acknowledge at every possible opportunity the right of Jewish people to a national homeland uh, there in the State of Israel. Australia has long supported, both sides of Australian politics have long supported uh, the so-called two-state solution in, uh, in the Middle East. But it's not just any two-state solution. It has got to be a two-state solution which absolutely recognises the right of Israel to exist behind secure borders behind secure borders. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, it should be a solution which acknowledges the continuing role of Israel in Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem, as we know, is a city which is sacred to three great faiths. But at no time in recent history has Jerusalem been more open to the people of all three faiths uh, than since 1967 uh, under Israeli control. And as far as I'm concerned, that should continue. That should continue. <laughs> I should also add that uh, no self-respecting Australian government uh, should ignore the fact that the Palestinian Authority uh, to which we give about $40 million a year in aid, uh, is also providing um, rewards, recognition uh, to people who are out-and-out -out terrorists inside the State of Israel. And as long as this is the case, uh, I believe we should commensurately reduce uh, our aid to the Palestinian Authority. <laughs> I also believe that should the United States finally decide to move its embassy from Tel Aviv <laughs> to Jerusalem, Australia should follow suit. <laughs> we would be rightly affronted uh, if a country uh, for its own reasons, decided that its embassy to Australia would be located in Sydney rather than in Canberra. Uh, so why shouldn't uh, countries that uh, have diplomatic relations with Israel uh, place their embassies in Israel's national capital? But the final point I want to make for discussing Israel is that because Israel is the only liberal pluralist democracy in the Middle East, because Israel is a bastion of freedom in a diabolically difficult part of the world, any serious threat to Israel's continued existence is a threat not simply to Israel, but a threat to the wider Western world, and it should be responded to as such. I'm very conscious of the fact that over the years, Australia has played a not insignificant role in that part of the world, and I think we should continue to play a significant role in that part of the world in support of our interests, our values, and our allies, and that certainly should include Israel as well. Finally, let me say that uh, uh, I am here tonight at a Chabad dinner 
uh, I am here to acknowledge the wonderful work uh, that you do. Uh, I am very conscious of the fact that all of us are shaped and formed by a history, a culture, a civilization, and is absolutely critical in an uncertain and at times challenging world that we appreciate and build on those things that have made us what we are. Um, the Jewish faith has made an extraordinary, a simply extraordinary contribution uh, to the world. Uh, yes, uh, uh, there are seven million people in Israel. There's probably roughly the same number of Jewish people uh, right around the world. To think that such a tiny handful has made such an amazing difference. Uh, I hope that you are so incredibly proud of who you are and what you've done uh, because I am proud uh, to be your friend, your supporter and your guest of honour tonight. Thank you. Thank you.